Now, in the last lesson, we built our natural language processing machine learning model that is going to be predicting sentiment or emotion from tweets that we give it. Now, in this lesson, we're going to get it set up and incorporate it into our Twitter Menti app. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you head over to the GitHub page for Twitter Menti iOS 12 and go ahead and git clone or download and unzip the initial skeleton project. And once you've done so, you should end up with this Xcode project. And just as we've done before millions of times now for all of our ML models, we're simply going to drag and drop our brand new model, the tweet sentiment classifier model into our project. So I'm just going to drag and drop it into our project and make sure that under destination, you check that copy items if needed is ticked. So let's go ahead and click finish. So that is now available inside our project as the class tweet sentiment classifier. Now, the next thing we need to do is to get ourselves some tweets, right? And in order to pull the live tweet from Twitter, we're going to be using the Twitter API. And in order to do that, we first have to register to be a Twitter developer. So if you head over to developer.twitter.com and go ahead and click apply, and Twitter has a number of tiers for their API. They have premium, they have enterprise, and they also have standard. This is the free one that we'll be using for our project. So go ahead and click get started with standard access. Now, the first thing you have to do is to create a Twitter app. And you have to do that at apps.twitter.com. And here you're going to click create a new app. Now, at this stage, you might be asked to log in. So you'll need a Twitter user account if you don't already have one. If you do have one, then just go ahead and log in to your normal Twitter account and you'll be able to get started creating an application. Now, the next step is you need to give your application a name. Now, I've called mine Twitter Menti after the app that I have created, but you might need to give it a different name. So anything that makes sense to you is fine. Give it a brief description and then put in a website. Now, if you don't have a website, then you can go ahead and put our website, which is www.appbrewery.co.co and leave the callback URL empty. That's mostly for when you try to use Twitter as a authentication. So, for example, log in with Twitter for your apps. We're not going to be doing that. And finally, just check the developer agreement and click yes. And then you can go ahead and create your Twitter application. Now, once you've created your application, you can see that you have a number of things here. And these are your API keys. And keep this page open because we're going to be using those API keys very shortly in order to authenticate our API requests to Twitter. Now, if we head back to the Twitter documentation where it says get started, you can see that we've already done the first step, which is creating an app on apps.twitter.com. The next step is to start using the endpoints. So start making requests to the Twitter servers and we can check out the documentation and API references and how to use the Twitter API. But there's also a lot of libraries and utilities that they point us towards, which will make it much, much easier to work with the Twitter API. You can see that there are libraries built by Twitter and there are libraries built for the Twitter platform. Now, one of the most useful and simplest to use is something called Swifter, which is a Twitter framework for iOS and Mac OS written in Swift. And this is the library that we're going to be using in our project to make our lives really easy when we're trying to work with the Twitter API. Now, I've known many developers, senior and junior alike, getting bogged down in the Twitter API docs and getting stuck. And Swifter is just simply a much more pain-free way of working with the Twitter framework. And it allows us to do everything that we can do with Twitter APIs, but provides essentially a wrapper around it that makes it much easier and much smoother to work with Twitter's API. 
Now, in order to use Swifter, as they say here, under getting started, then we have to drag the Swifter Xcode project into our own project and add either the Swifter iOS or Swifter Mac framework as an embedded framework. So I'll walk you through step by step what all of that means and how we can do it. But firstly, we need to git clone this project. So I'm going to copy the HTTPS address. I'm going to head over to terminal and I'm going to CD over to my desktop. And here I'm going to git clone this particular address for Swifter. And then let's open it up. And now we have Swifter here. So if you look inside here, there's a whole bunch of things uh, such as the Swifter demo for Mac, Swifter demo for iOS, the tests, and also the Swifter Xcode project. So we're going to follow these instructions to the letter. We're going to drag the Swifter Xcode project into our own project. Now it's kind of important where you drag it into because it's very easy to say drag it into your project, but does that mean drag it into the folder or drag it into the project or drag it down here. What do you exactly do? So that's the next thing I'm going to address. So once you've got the Swifter file open, you're going to click and drag it and you're going to put it just under where it says Twitter Menti. So just above our readme. And now we've incorporated the Swifter Xcode project into our Twitter Menti project so that we can tap into all the code that's inside that framework. So that's step one completed. Step two is add the Swifter iOS framework as an embedded framework. So how do we embed frameworks into our current project? So we need to head over to our general tab under the settings for our Twitter Menti app. And we're going to go down here to embedded binaries and we're going to add the Swifter iOS framework. And once we've added that, if we head over to our build phases, then we can check to make sure that the Swifter iOS framework is included in the embedded frameworks. And now let's just hit command B or go to product and build just to make sure that we don't have any errors and that everything works. Now, once you've done that, you might see that build has failed and you'll get three errors that are originating from the Swifter iOS framework. Now, if you don't see any errors, anything red on screen, but you're still getting build failed, then it's a good idea to just close down the project and just open it again and then go ahead and try to build your app again. And it should trigger Xcode to show you the errors. This is something that I've seen sometimes with Xcode 10. So the three errors that are preventing our project from building successfully are all related to something called SF Safari View Controller Delegate. And the error is telling us that this thing that we're trying to use, so you can click on it to see where it's being used. And it's of course inside the Swifter code. It says that it's only available on iOS 9 or newer. And it's suggesting to us some things that we can do, but don't go with their suggestion. Instead, we're going to go into the Swifter project and we're going to select that framework Swifter iOS, which we're trying to depend on. And then we're going to go into the part where it says deployment target. And you can see it's got 8.0 selected by default from the beginning. Whereas the code that it's trying to use is only available in nine or above. So let's go ahead and change this to 10.0. And if we go ahead and build our app again, then you can see those errors will disappear. Now, once those errors have disappeared, we now get a warning, a single warning, which says open URL, which is something that we're trying to use here, or rather Swifter is trying to use over here, was deprecated, namely that it was retired basically in iOS 10. Please use this other method instead, which is URL with options and a completion handler. Now, 
If you want to leave this, your app will work just fine without it. But if you are OCD like me and you want to get rid of all of your warnings, then you can go ahead and change this method so that it abides by these rules. Now, in order to change it, all we have to do is delete the rest of the call and type open URL again. And you can see this one with the line with the strike through is the one that has been deprecated. And instead, we have to use the method that's just called open with options and completion handler. And so let's go ahead and hit enter so that it types it in. The URL that we need to put in here is the query URL. The options is going to be empty. So I'm just going to write a square bracket and inside there'll be a set of colon. And then the completion handler is again nil. We're basically trying to stay true to what this line of code used to do and what the original developers of Swifter wanted to do, but I'm guessing they didn't have the time to update this just yet. But now if you hit command B, your warnings should disappear as well, and you should have a clean slate in your errors and warnings sidebar. Now, there's no need to understand what it is that we did over here because it's completely unrelated to our project. It's just fixing the third party library in order to get rid of all of our warnings. And this is one of the downsides of working with third party libraries because you're always dependent on the library owner to update their code so that you're not getting any errors or warnings. Now, if you are particularly charitable and you're feeling like you want to volunteer and do some good in the world, then you can always try to fix this yourself. Make a fork on the original GitHub repository for Swifter and contribute to this framework that you're using. Now, if you're somebody who's particularly curious and you want to know why we just did what we did, then you can go ahead to this URL and read about the open URL deprecation in iOS 10. And this will tell you why it is that it got deprecated and what changed. All right. So at this point, we have incorporated our tweet sentiment classifier ML model. And we have also incorporated the Swifter framework. Now, as you can see, if we don't have CocoaPods, or if the third party libraries don't put their project onto CocoaPods, then there's actually a number of stuff that we have to do. And it's all very, very manual. But we've done all of that. We've incorporated the framework and embedded it into our project. So and we have fixed all of the errors and warnings that are associated with it. And we're ready to get started completing the next step, which is using this Swifter framework to tap into the Twitter API and start searching and fetching some tweets. And that is what we're going to be doing in the next lesson. So I'll see you over there.